Hi, this is Josh. I'm a pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com. Um, today's video, we're going to talk about weight gain from medications. We're going to talk about some of the most common medications associated with weight gain. So the medication classes I'm going to cover will be uh, nerve pain, antidepressants, uh, other mental health medications, antihistamines or allergy medications, steroids, uh, blood pressure medications, birth control, insulin, and oral diabetes medications. So as with all my videos, this is informational only. It's not intended to serve as a substitute for speaking with your doctor or healthcare provider. Never make changes to your medication lifestyle, etc., without speaking to your healthcare provider. And so we want to be certain uh, many of these medications are very important. Um, they should not, they sh many of them would need to be tapered if you have to go off of them. Typically, we're treating some pretty serious health conditions, um, and there are, are often uh, withdrawal symptoms if we stop these abruptly. So always speak to your healthcare provider if you feel like you're having some weight gain from your medications. So nerve pain, the two most common medications that uh, can cause some weight gain are gabapentin and pregabalin. So Neurontin and Lyrica, very popular medications, very good for many people at getting their nerve pain under control. Does seem to be um, dose dependent, so the higher the dose you're on, the um, more likely some weight gain can occur. If you are diabetic, that also increases your risk. Now, if you've had nerve pain, it's you've off, probably have not been able to be very physically active. So as nerve pain improves, it's a possibility you could offset some of the weight gain by increasing your physical activity. Also, some of these medications seem to increase appetite. So watching uh, one's diet could also mitigate some of the weight gain associated with these. SSRIs, uh, antidepressants serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors. Paroxetine seems to be uh, one of the most common associated with weight gain. Um, it seems like it may increase cravings for carbohydrates. It has effects on uh, histamine and serotonin receptors, and that uh, seems that it can increase appetite. So that may be how it occurs. There are SSRIs that are associated with uh, less weight gain are uh, less likely to cause weight gain. Those would include uh, fluoxetine, that's uh, generic for Prozac, uh, certainly generic Zoloft, citalopram, generic Celexa, and escitalopram, generic Lexapro. All may be options if uh, we're experiencing some weight gain with paroxetine. Again, a conversation you'd want to have with your healthcare provider. Uh, tricyclic antidepressants. These are older antidepressants. We do see an increase uh, in appetite with those. Um, unfortunately, some sedation can occur with these as well, so that may um, that decrease your physical activity, putting you at risk of gaining weight. Um, these do work well for, uh, we see these used for nerve pain or for headache uh, prevention. Uh, so they are important and they can improve your quality of life, but you have to um, be mindful it could you could put on some weight it may actually decrease your metabolism the two most common ones are amitriptyline and nortriptyline so um, that's something that can occur with those others uh, that we can see some weight gain mirtazapine or remeron um, unfortunately we can see some weight gain with that olanzapine that's generic Cyprexa, quetiapine, which is generic Seroquel, and Risperdal or Risperidone. Those uh, can be associated with weight gain. Now, there are these, these are possible replacements or alternatives, again, entirely up to you and your provider. Um, some of these associated with weight gain are more affordable. So we definitely have to take cost into consideration when we're considering therapy. Uh, Aripiprazole. There are Abilify and Vega, Latuda, uh, Ziprazidone, Geodon. Those are all one, all medications um, that are associated with neutral weight gain and possible alternatives to these other medications. Um, Anticonvulsants are mood stabilizers. Uh, Tegretol, valproic acid, lithium. Those are all associated with uh, potential weight gain. Less likely ones, uh, Lamotrigine, Phenytoin, uh, Keppra, Levetiracetam, those would be potential alternatives. And there are some even associated with weight loss, Topamax or Topiramate and Zanisamide. 
uh, potential options right there. Again, it's depending what it's used for, of course, the cost of therapy. Uh, there are many options out there available to mitigate the weight gain. Uh, antihistamines. Um, antihistamines are allergy medicines. They block histamine receptors, of course, and that can increase appetite and that can also cause sedation, leading to decrease in physical activity. Older first generations seem more common to cause this, things like Benadryl, Chlorotrimeton. Those are more uh, associated with more weight gain than newer ones. Long term, it's generally recommended use second generation uh, cetirizine, loratadine, fexofenadine. Weight gain can still occur with the uh, second generation. It does seem to be a lot less. Um, if you feel like you're getting some weight gain with one of these, it's possible you could try another one. Again, speak with your healthcare provider if you feel like that's causing some weight gain. Uh, steroids. Steroids, we're talking things like prednisone. The weight gain seems um, most likely, it's very likely if you take it long term. Um, so if you have some sort of respiratory illness and you're on a short burst of steroid, it's not associated with any significant weight gain for most people. It seems to be a long term side effect. Um, as steroids can affect glucose metabolism, being on steroids long term can give you type 2 diabetes that is well known and it can redistribute adipose tissue and that can also um, increase weight gain or lead to the weight gain as well the redistribution of fat tissue in the body uh, can contribute to that but typically if you're on a long-term steroid use you have some pretty serious conditions that warrant the use of this so um, typically once you're started on that, it's very hard to get off. You have to slowly taper that over time. And there may not be any other options available for you. Uh, blood pressure medications. The most common blood pressure medications to be associated with some weight gain are beta blockers. And even then, it's not typically a lot of weight gain. Um, keep in mind, it, any some uh, blood pressure, all the blood pressure medications sometimes can be associated with fluid retention. That um, you know is a side effect which you'd want to speak to your healthcare provider about. But the um, beta blockers may reduce metabolism. Uh, they may increase insulin resistance, so the body becomes less. Um, um, it doesn't respond to insulin like it should, and that could lead to weight gain. Typically, it seems though, if it's going to occur with beta blockers, usually in the first three months. So um, if you're started on it, it's controlling your blood pressure or reducing your risk of other cardiac issues, and you haven't had weight gain within three months, you should be good to go. Some common examples are atenolol and propranolol. Um, other beta blockers that um, also dilate the blood vessels, like carvedilol or generic cogareg, that one doesn't seem to cause uh, the weight gain that we can sometimes see with propranolol and atenolol. And again, it's typically not uh, a, a huge weight gain, but it can occur. Birth control. Uh, unfortunately, the injectable like Depo Provera is the one most commonly associated with weight gain. Um, weight gain can also occur within the first three or four cycles due to fluid change in fluid retention and that typically may resolve um, once you once you've been on it uh, for four or five cycles switching to lower doses of hormones also may help again your healthcare provider can help you determine there are many options available so if you're having uh, side effects with one there may be other options for you Insulin. Um, we're talking especially insulin in the type 2 diabetic. It can sometimes cause significant weight gain. I've seen this occur. So if you're a type 2 diabetic and your doctor is talking about putting you on insulin, you may really want to um, focus your energy on diet and lifestyle changes that your doctor has approved because that can go a long way. Once you get on insulin, I've had people um, tell me they really struggle with the weight gain once they start on insulin when they're type 2 diabetic. It does, for many folks, it makes it hard to um, maintain uh, weight. It generally occurs within the first few months of starting insulin and combining the insulin. So if you're taking a medication like metformin, that may reduce the weight gain as well. 
Uh, oral diabetes medications are also associated with weight gain, the sulfonylureas. Same reasons as insulin as they increase the amount of insulin your body is making. It's the more popular ones we see, glimepiride, glipizide, gliburide. Um, so weight gain can occur with those. Actose, pioglitazone, we do see some fluid retention and maybe some increased appetite. So that one also associated with some weight gain. All right. I appreciate you watching this. I hope you found the information useful. I would uh, appreciate it if you liked the video, if you subscribe to my channel. And go ahead and ask any questions in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them for you. Thank you for watching.